And let's go to 10 minutes. <coughs>
understand it. <laughs> but we find that that standard nowadays has been changed with our young people, and even sometimes with the older people. But it's okay. We just don't need to get married. We can just shock up. We can just be together. You know, we're, we're just like being married. It's not the same. Because a real marriage entails commitment. Yeah. But the, the devil has come in like a flood. And so it's all right now that we don't have to get a piece of paper. We don't need this. But well, you know what? That piece of paper establishes a commitment. Just like when you get baptized in water. Did you all know that that's just like a marriage license? Because it's an outward sign. We know the real marriage takes place on the inside. We all know that, right? Because a piece of, piece of, piece of paper don't keep two people together. Amen? Amen. It's not going to happen. It never has happened and it never will happen. A piece of paper would never keep a man and a woman together. It takes a commitment. And the piece of paper and the ring is simply showing that I have made a commitment to this man and to this woman. Right. Baptism, it doesn't save us. Mm -hmm. Baptism is showing that I've made an outward sign and outward to everyone else that I've made a commitment to Jesus. That's yeah. all that it does, saints. Oh, bless his name. But now they try to tell us that the standard has changed. You don't want to get baptized. But the Bible said that's one of the things Jesus commanded, didn't he? They're trying to take away the standard. You don't have to get married. But then Jesus said that every man have his own wife. And every woman have her own husband. But we don't have to get married. They're trying to take down the standard. You all see what I mean now when I say the enemy has come in like a flood? He has changed things today. Used to be we stayed away from mind altering drugs. You got young people that they say, ain't nothing wrong with marijuana. But let me tell you something. There is something wrong with marijuana, Amen. with weed, or whatever they want to call it today. It is something wrong with it because, first of all, it kills brain cells. Yes. And it also, it is a depressant. We know it makes you feel good initially. It gets you up there and feeling high and feeling all, all good and giddy. But you know what? But then you come down and you crash. Yeah. And you don't want to, you, you can't get up. You can't wake up and you can't keep a job because you can't even get up anymore. All right. oh, saints. And then on top of that, it's a gateway because the average person that spells out with marijuana don't stay with marijuana. They go on to harder and harder and harder drugs. So all oh, that's his name today. It doesn't matter what the devil's standard he put in place. There is a standard and there's something God has established and put in place. He said, listen, he that destroys the body, him will God also destroy. I'm not going to kill my body. Listen, it's going to happen quick enough anyway. But I don't have to have it along the way. Oh, bless his name. But God is establishing the devil has come in like a flood in these last days. He's coming in and listen. Now I want to talk about, we talk about individually a lot of things and in our homes and the, 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 the standards have changed so much. How we raise our children. Oh my goodness sakes, my goodness. The, the way, the, even the way we come to church. Everything has changed. The way we dress. Going out of your house in pajamas. I don't care if they, 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 they call them, it's the style now. The saints of God, we don't get in that style. Amen. We don't wear pajamas outside the house going to Walmart and everywhere else. The standard has changed. It has changed. It, it, it hasn't changed for the better. It has changed for the worse. And so with all those things that, that the world is trying to tell us is okay to be this, okay to do that, and everything else, there is a standard. I would look at Webster's Dictionary and, and, and look up what it said for standard. Anybody else does every, every once in a while go and do that? <laughs> well, what, they, what, they, what, they, what does this word really mean? What do they say? I, mean, I know in my mind, I know what it is, but I want to know what, what, is the, what, the, what is the dictionary? What do people say this word means? Pretty, pretty good, pretty good definition here. Look what it says here. A level of quality or attainment. In other words, a, a quality, a level, a grade, a degree, a worth, a caliber, a merit, all those things stands for standard. It said, an ideal or thing used as a measure, a norm, or model in comparative evaluation. In other words, when you compare this and you compare that, this is the standard. And everything else is compared to what everybody say is perfect, Perfection, 
They use it as the standard, the measuring stick. They use it as a standard. You don't understand that. It also says here, it's normal, it's usual, typical, common, ordinary, customary, conventional, habitual, accustomed, expected, mm, wanted, everyday, regular, routine, day-to-day, -day, established, Settled, set, fixed, traditional, and quantifiable, and the prevailing. All of those words are synonymous with standard. All of those things they use in today's language, in today's terms. So if we went from the world standpoint, what we do as God's people, we're non-standard. If we use the world's measuring stick, we are not non-standard. Because the world says, what? If I point out, that's the world's standard. You shoot my cat, I'm going to kill your dog. That's standard for the world. It's standard to go behind someone's back and try to steal their rain. I don't care if you are married. You see, that's standard. But that's non-standard for the people of God. So we are living a different standard. And let me tell you, our standard is a real standard. It sits up here. It's never going to falter. It's never going to waver. It's never going to come down. We may, but the standard never changes. And so at one point, God let us know that we must Stand. And that's where the word stand or comes from. To stand on what? On the standard. And the law, the word of God, is our standard. People have tried to change it. They are still trying to change it. But the standard of God, the word of God, it is not going to change. I don't care how many people look at it, how many laws they pass. The standard of God will never change. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God, which is his standard, it is never going to pass away. Oh, bless his name. Every church, every, everything down here is going to pass away. But the word of God is still going to stand up by itself. And said by the, by the word of God, the world's were even framed and found and been established. By the word of God, our salvation was established. By the word of God, God created everything that was. By the word. The word is what's going to stand, and that's where our standard comes from. And but the problem is that they say many people don't know the word of God, so we don't know the standard of God. The word establishes the standard. Oh, bless his name. And so he said there in the book of Ephesians, it says that we must stand after we have been all that stand. And the enemy has come in like a flood. Saints of God, let the pastor give you a warning today. It hits every one of us. The enemy has come in like a flood. He's come in not just for trials and tribulations, not just for sickness and pain. But he's come in, and this is the thing that he's attacking right now. Yeah. This is where he wants to hit us at the most. I was thinking, are you all hot? I see people fanning. Hmm. Are you all hot? Just let me know. We've got to be back there. We'll turn the air on a little bit. <laughs> so I may get annoyed, but I'm not going to go around and see fans going like this. I'm okay. But he's come in so to the point, thanks to devil. Is coming in and he's trying to dictate what is standard for us. He's trying to change the standard of God. In the book of Galatians, the third chapter, in the first verse. And Paul, you can turn to it if you want to. And Paul said there in Galatians, the third chapter, in the first verse, he said, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? that you shall not obey the truth. Having begun in the spirit, have you now became perfect by the flesh? And we started this thing spiritually, this hope of God spiritually, how can we become perfect by walking in the flesh? 
it's not going to happen. The standard had changed. It had fallen to the point of all saying, I'm going to climb. But it changed the point where, where people thought the natural things would make them perfect. And let me tell you what, what, what happened with us as, as, as a race of people, as black people. Because I'm old enough now that I can look back and remember those things. When I was born, we didn't have a whole lot. We didn't care about some things. Simply because we knew we didn't have it. And we didn't, listen, and we didn't miss anything because we never had it. Well, let me tell you how, and, and we prayed. We went to church. Yeah. Even when we didn't want to go to church. <laughs> we had to go to church. And when it came to church, people were happy not having a whole lot. They were content. They had a Sunday best, and they went home and took that Sunday best off. They didn't want to tear it up, get it messed up, but they had to wear it the next Sunday. Right. And then on top of that, we had to walk the church. We didn't drive. Yeah. Right. But we were happy. We were content. We were glad what we were. And you know what? What happened? The tendency is this here. As we begin to prosper and God begin to bless us in the natural, we, got, we walked away from the standard. We walked away from God. And now all of a sudden, we, went, we never were concerned about how, the, the, how we were dressed so much. We had one Sunday best, yeah. one good pair of shoes, one good suit. Yeah. Just one of everything because that's all we could afford. And we stayed with that. And we didn't really care how we looked. We didn't come to church looking around and see who wanted this and that and getting ideas on what I want, getting what I want to wear, and looking at their hat and what they're wearing. We didn't want to worry about that because nobody had anything. All right. Well, let me tell you, when he came to church, they came to church with hands lifted up. Yeah. They came to church saying, hallelujah, yeah. and thank you, Jesus, yeah. and bless his name. They came to church looking for the Lord and let him have his way. But all of a sudden, things got better for us in the natural. We got cars, we got more clothes, we got more shoes, yeah. we got everything that we dreamed of, and yet the standard changed. Yeah. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has been with you that you should not obey the truth, having begun in the spirit? My goodness. Now we walk out of the house, everything got to be in place. Yeah. We come to church now. Everything got to be perfect. Yes. Mm -mm. I would never get to that point. I'm not saying, listen, I know me. I don't care enough about the looks, the outward man. My wife should be urged for some time because I don't care a lot. We gotta have somebody to balance us, you know. Amen. Because if we don't, <laughs> y'all make sure the pastor cover your dress and anything. <laughs> so we need some balance. But, a, but she got a hard job sometimes. <laughs> she has a hard job sometimes. I don't get caught up on those things. But we gotta have some balance. But the thing is, is that now we got to the point where we got to have this. Used to be, we were just glad to have any kind of old car. Yeah. A Duesenberg, that was good. As long as we got us from point A to point B, we didn't care. Uh -huh. Now we got to have the best thing rolling. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get it, we're not satisfied, we're not happy. I, 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 I heard comments say, you know, they, they, they look, my pastor driving around, and, and, and this, but they used to preach just driving around in big old fancy cars. Well, you know what? Every time I go to the gas station, I got a smile on my face. All right, some boys. I have to smile. I listen. I laugh when I go to the gas station now. Yeah. When I get my forty-five miles to the gallon, that's fine for me. I don't All care right. about the looks. All right. I care about functionality. All right. And that's what God is. See, we have lowered and raised the standards according to what we thought and what we believe. But in the end, God is still telling us to be good stewards over what he's given us. Now, if you have a certain amount of money that you have after you've given your tithe, you have a certain amount he's entrusted you will, he still wants you to be a good steward over it. Yeah. Some of us are still going and spending everything. I know some of us are in tough situations. But some of us are still spending everything that we get yeah. before payday. And so we're broke before payday gets there again. That's not being a good steward, saints. That's not being a good steward. We want to be blessed. We've got to learn how to be good stewards. The standard has been set. But you know what I put the standard has fallen to and changed to nowadays? Especially our young people. I'm going to get what I want. And I don't care about it. I look at the bills later on. I look at the house payments later on. 
I'll look at the electric bill later on. I'll look at the insurance payment later on. But I'm going to get what I want to get first. That's the new standard. That's not being a good steward. And so what happens is, as we have progress, we've left the standard that God established, and many of them we have let go. Even in the church, we have left the standards of putting Jesus first. Putting God first. Yeah. We have used to be poor old men. We didn't have to live in small, raggedy buildings. And we were so happy. And the Spirit of God moved in those places. But all of a sudden now, as God has blessed us, we get big fine houses of worship. And now we put so more, more into the building than we do into ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. We, we think that, oh, we made it. And God is so happy with us because we, we, we arrived here. But you know what? God is frowning. He's, ha he's not happy. He's getting sad because we'll stop seeking him the way we used to seek him right. when we had critters living in the walls. Yes, sir. When we had holes in the floor. Yeah. Oh, we didn't care about the building so much then. We just wanted to come to church and have a good time with yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Oh, what happens when we begin to progress? The standard falls. What, what God desires don't matter as much anymore. Same for the standard of God. The word of God, it still stands sure. Yeah. And the word of God stands on God himself because he's focused. Mm -hmm. It stands sure. And so Paul spoke kind of harshly to the Galatians. Because they started with God the right way. They started out seeking him. They started out caring about those things of the spirit. But are you now made perfect by the flesh? Saints, we, 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 we try so hard. That's where the church world is falling. We, we're more concerned about titles and positions yes. Yes. being seen. Yes. We're more concerned about those things than we are about the things of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, the church doesn't have to depend on me to prosper. All right. The church is not dependent on me to where it's going to go where God wants to go. I have become irrelevant because God can replace me today. I didn't say tomorrow. He can replace me today. So I, mean, I become irrelevant to the extent where I don't have to be seen. I don't need the titles. I don't need positions. All I need to do is make sure I'm doing the things that God wants me to do. We, 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 we've gotten to the point now where we compete with one another in the churches so much. And I'm saying as individuals, but even as churches. Saints, so we've got to get to a point when the standard of God, we've got to get to a point where we just are not afraid to be different. We can't be afraid to let God set a standard and we stay on a certain standard. Because what happens when we, we, we fall from a standard, we look out and see what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. what everybody else has. Yeah. We fall from a standard then. Because I told you on the last week, everybody now, I don't care if they don't have five dollars in the treasure. I don't care if they don't have everybody got two or three people showing up at church. They got all certain things in the church. Mm -hmm. Because everybody else has it. They're going down to those clear podiums. Everybody seen see those things? You gotta have them now. Yeah. Why? Because everybody else has them. Yeah. That's not a standard that God set. Right. Now they have, as soon as you get in, they gotta have a new van, brand new, up-to-date model van sitting on the parking lot. God never made that a standard. People at other churches, and we made that a standard because we want to compete and do what everybody else is doing. Yeah. It says it's all right. To be different. Yeah. Come on, look at somebody and say, it's all right to be different. It's all right, it's all right not to have what everybody else has. Yeah. It's all right not to be like everybody else. It's all right, saints. Don't be afraid. Don't get upset. Don't get nervous because you're not like everybody else. It's all right for birth to see to be different than other churches. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. We're not the ones that are afraid to be different. And listen, and when we're afraid to be different, has set a standard, and we're saying, Lord, I don't care about your standard. I just want to be like everybody else. Amen? Man. I'm talking to somebody here today. Because it's all right for people to look at you finally because you're not doing what everybody else is doing. 
We are so afraid that, that the people that are looking at us a certain way that we change, we are men, we alter, we take down the standard so that we're not sticking out. That we're not different than everyone. But let me tell you something. If you are truly serve God as an individual, as a church, as a people, you are going to stand out. Because, listen, the Bible says broad is the way. Narrow is the way that does what? Leading to what? Right. To righteousness. To heaven. Narrow. But broad is the way that what? Destruction. Leading to destruction. Mm -hmm. And many there be that be on that path. Saints, we are the few. We set the standard now. When we prayed the prayer a few years ago, Lord, bless mercy seat and let mercy seat be the example of what you're looking for in a church in these last days. And again, I don't have the time to go into all the things that make up a church, but God established that standard. But we cannot be afraid to be different from everyone else and we're going to be the one to set the standard. Remember the definition it said something, something where about everything else is gauged or judged or measured? Let everybody else be measured to mercy seat, God. Let us be that close. Let us be right in that place. Let us set the standard so God and you to where everything, everybody else can look at mercy seat and judge whether they're good or bad. Let me give you a better, good example of that. Everybody heard about Charleston basketball history, right? Everybody knows about Charleston, Charleston basketball history. We have a legacy here in Southeast Missouri, all over the state. Every year, you're in and you're out. Every other team in Southeast Missouri measured themselves on how good their team was based on how they played Charleston. Whether they won, whether they lost, how many they lost by, they would judge themselves based on how good they played against Charleston. Because Charleston was the standard. Charleston basketball was the standard. Everybody in South East Missouri knew that Charleston basketball was the standard whereby everybody else measured themselves. All things of God. I want mercy seat to be so close to God. Walk so close to him, knowing his will, knowing his way, knowing what he wants, and let everybody else can measure themselves against mercy seat. Yes. A praying church, a praising church, a loving church, a tolerant church, or a church that God who has all the characteristics of God, who don't take down, who does not compromise, but a church that loves everybody. Listen, I want everybody to look at mercy seat and measure themselves accordingly. And then there's more of us as individuals. The only way we can be the standard for God is we must be doing the things, have the mind of Christ, and doing the things that God wants us to do, and people are going to measure themselves against you. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I, I never forget. I thought retired. Brian, Brian he told me one time, he said, there was something going on at the office, and he said, one of the guys in the office said, said words, man, I wish your daddy was still here, but I'd like to hear what he had to say about this situation. They judged themselves. And judge the situation based on what I thought, the way I would deal with it, the way I would handle it. You become the standard. You become the standard, saints. But if we take down, if we compromise, if we're afraid to be different, we can never be the standard setter. It's okay, saints. Well, look, somebody says it's okay to be different. It's okay to be different. Don't be afraid. It's okay to be different. If I don't have the same kind of quality of living in a certain type of house, you know, if I don't have a certain type of job, if I don't have a certain education level, it's all right. Jesus never had all the things that we talk about today. All the things we're striving for today. He never had those. But if, listen to it. He, there's no name given unto me on earth without another, or in heaven without we must be saved. And there is no greater name than what? Jesus. No greater name than what? Jesus. So let me be like Jesus. I may not be rich. I may not have a big mansion on the hill. I may not have the finest car to drive in. I may not have the best clothes. I may not be able to eat in the restaurants you eat in. But you know what's all right? As long as I am like Jesus, then I am all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. As long as I'm not embodying who he is, I am all right. As yeah. long as I'm grown into the full measure and stature of Jesus, I am all right. Yeah. As long as I can show forth the light that shines from heaven in my life, I am all right.
saints, we got some work to do, don't we? We got some work to do. That's all right. I'm up to the challenge. I'm up to the challenge today. Because I may not be there right now. But I'm getting there. My wall that's standing, they say, that's set up against the flood. It may not be complete yet, but I'm building my wall. All right. And when the enemy comes in the next time like a flood, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to say,
stand. Yes. Let us stand today, God. Yes. And when we do all that we know to stand, God, you be right there and uphold us. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we're saying today, thank you now, God. Thank you. Anyone today, you need God to strengthen you in any way. You know who you are. You don't have to look around. No one should be looking around. Just close your eyes. You can stand where you are, and I want you to stand and lift those hands and tell God. Just stand where you are and lift those hands and tell God, hallelujah, Lord, help me to stand. Yes, Lord. Help me to hold on. Help yes, me not Lord. to take down. Give me a yes, clear Lord. vision on today. Yes, Give me direction in my personal life. Yes. And help me know, let me know, God, when I am taken down, yes. when I am compromising, yes, let me know, God. Hallelujah. And even now, God is speaking. Sometime in sickness, Lord, we'll take down. In sickness, we don't trust in Him. We don't depend on Him. But saints of God, let me tell you what God is getting ready to do. God is going to show Himself again to us. To let us know that we can walk and we go on a certain plane. We can walk a certain way. God is going to perform miracles in our lives. He's going to work out miracles in our bodies. Yes, to let prove to us that there is a standard. Yes, and that standard is with God. It's yes, not with man. It's not with money. Yes, oh, it's with God on today. God is working out, working out our yes, bodies, God. Heal today. Heal today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, lift those hands if you know God, if you know you need it, if you know you need it. Lift those hands high on today, saints. Glory. You got to show God that I want it more than my reputation. I want it more than car, more than money, more than position, more than title, more than oh, popularity and fame. I want you more than anything else, God. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Bless his name. Bless yes. his name. Yes. Let him speak to you today. Let him speak to you today. And let him do it for you. Yes. Saints, there's nothing. I, and I give my own personal testimony. Yes. When I said, Lord, let revival start in, start in me. Yes. Something happened on the inside. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And glory. And Father, we thank you now what you've been doing in our lives. Yes, Sometimes we, 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 we don't even take time to, to, to assess and to look and see yes. what you have been doing, God. Yes. But today, when we look back, God, yes. not longingly and, and saying, I wish I was back there, but when we look back, God, you, and see where you brought us Thank from. You, Lord. When we look yes. back and see what you have done Thank in our you, lives, God, yes. we can say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We can say, Thank you, Thank you. 